Blessed afternoon to everyone and welcome to our afternoon worship service. May I invite everyone to let's fix our hearts together as we worship our God. First, before we sing a song, let me read from Psalm 23. Psalm 23. We are all familiar with this, or most of us are familiar with this. A Psalm of David. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. What wonderful truths from Scripture that teach us that we have a great shepherd in our Savior, Jesus Christ. Now the next song, the song that we're going to sing is written in the first person, and it relates that message. My sheep know my voice. All together on the first verse. Ready, sing. My sheep know my voice and the path that I take. They follow wherever I go. My sheep know my voice and come at my call. But a stranger's voice do they not know. My sheep my voice and day by day they abide in the fold and go not astray they love me because I have made them my choice and they follow my call for my sheep know my voice let us praise God that we have a great shepherd who will deliver us through the valley of the shadow of death on the second verse my sheep know my voice and the valley of death through which I shall lead them someday. But no danger nor harm can touch and touch one of them, for I will be with them always. My sheep know my voice, and day by day, Abide in the fold and go not astray. They love me because I have made them my choice and they follow my call for my. God, for the truths in those songs, may I call Brother Genesis Mainez for our opening prayer. Afterwards, we're going to listen to our choir. Let's pray. Heavenly Father in, um, in heaven, uh, Lord, thank you for, um, for uh, being with us again, Lord, and, and I pray that uh, open our hearts, our mind to the preaching of the word. Allow us to praise you, to worship you, Lord. Uh, this afternoon, and um, I pray that our service is acceptable in your sight, O oh Lord. Um, all glory and praise to you, to your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. for me it's a promise that I 
have our, our Savior and if we have any doubts regarding our salvation and all we need to do is go back to that message the message of the cross may I request everyone to please stand who are here with us and those who are at home please join us as we sing another interesting and beautiful song in times like these all together on the first verse ready sing in times like these you need a Savior in times like these. You need an anchor, be very sure, be very sure. Your anchor holds and grips the solid rock. This rock is Jesus, yes, He's the one. This rock is Jesus, the only one. Be very sure, be very sure. Your anchor holds and grips the solid rock. In times like these, you need a Bible. In times like these, oh, be not idle. Be very sure, be very sure Your anchor holds and grips the solid rock This rock is Jesus, yes He's the one This rock is Jesus, the only one Be very sure, be very sure your anchor holds and grips the solid rock In times like these, I have a Savior In times like these, I have an anchor I'm very sure, I'm very sure My anchor holds and grips the solid rock This rock is Jesus Yes, He's the one This rock is Jesus The only one Be very 
solid rock Praise God for that wonderful singing May I call Brother Jay for our announcements Okay, so good morning church and welcome sa ating pong um, evening worship service and we praise and thank the Lord for uh, the wonderful song that God gave us uh, given to us and also uh, we would like to praise and thank the Lord na kahit pa paano medyo nabawasan na yung ating uh, ano, so nung nakaraan po ECQ tayo ngayon po ay nasa ME uh, MECQ po tayo so pag po natin na sana po ay bumalik na po muli sa dati po nating uh, time uh, 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 service po natin ang bawat isa po sa atin magsama-sama po muli tayo uh, dito po sa church po natin so pag pray po natin patuloy ang ating pong pastor special po yung kanyang health yung kanya pong kalakasan po na ibigay po ng Panginoon po sa kanya so uh, sa mga video calls po ng mga professor so uh, even during chapel hour ay nakita po natin yung uh, medyo lumalakas po yung ating pong pastor so please continue to pray po para po sa ating pastor and also uh, pag pray po natin yung ating pong uh, ties and offering and also faith promise po sa church po natin so pag pray po natin yung uh, bawat member po bawat isa po sa atin to be involved para po ma-sustain or to uh, ma-provide po yung pangangailangan po ng church po natin and also para po sa ating po mga missionaries na, na patuloy po natin masuportahan both uh, local and foreign uh, missionaries so ang ating po missionary for this week ay si missionary Eddie Eddie EE tama pa ba yung ano, pronunciation ko Eddie Eddie e. So ayan po yung ating po pagpray po natin na uh, ating po missionary for for this week. And also, uh, pagpray din po natin yung ating po ministry especially po sa my Sunday school po natin ng mga bata and we would like to remind our parents and also yung mga bata kung may nanonood po na we you have uh, your Zoom meeting with the, uh, with teacher uh, Apple and also if you want to uh, be part or uh, maka-attend po sa ating pong Zoom uh, Sunday School, I just contact Brother Liam and also Sister Apple, Ma'am Grace, para po sa my Zoom link. At least, um, uh, kahit sa bahay po tayo, you can still have our um, Sunday School sa mga bata. And also, yung ating combined Sunday School uh, held by Brother Irvin. So, every Sunday po yan at 9 a.m. So, we are now in the Book of Acts. So, patuloy po natin na uh, pag-pray yung ating Sunday School sa so our uh, lesson kayo ng umaga we owe to obey God rather than men so napakagan ng lesson niya kayo ng umaga so please uh, w- uh, wake up early every Sunday sa para maging makasama po tayo sa ating Sunday school every Sunday and then kung hindi man kayo nakapakinig kayo ng Sunday school natin so nandiyan naman po sa ating Facebook page so try to visit visit our uh, Facebook page in church po natin at least nandiyan po yung mga videos po natin Sunday school and also morning worship service and also yung ating pong Young People's Fellowship so kanina po ay uh, uh, yung ating pong lesson about get involved So we encourage our young people, members Na maging involved when it comes in evangelism When it comes in the work of the Lord Jesus Christ So pag pray po natin We are now praying for another next topic Or next series for uh, for, for for the next month Okay, so pag pray natin yung mga young people Especially young people po na sa iba't ibang mga lugar Provinces para po uh, uh, Yung mga hindi pa po makapunta ng Manila So pag pray po natin yung safety po ng bawat isa And also we have prayer meeting so still ang ating, ang ating pong online ay alas 6 po yan ng, uh, ng, uh, ng gabi or hapon So uh, every Wednesday po yan So pag-pray po natin yung mga gawain yan. And also we have ministries opportunities We have music uh, Also mga Bible studies po natin And also yung mga uh, sa children's ministries po natin So uh, nandiyan naman po sa children's ministry as, I've said, as I have said So kaila Brother William, Sir Apple and then Sir Grace communicate kayo sa kanila sa music ministry ng just Lester Joy, Kim, or Brother Irvin and also sa mga Bible studies po natin so we have uh, young ladies, young men, saka po sa mga adult po natin. Also please continue to pray for one another. So uh, uh, kung meron po kayong mga prayer request na you would like to uh, uh, may pagpray po kayo individually, so please uh, don't hesitate to contact Baptist Bible Church so kung hindi nyo alam yung number ng Baptist Bible Church, so kung nakakatanggap po kayo ng uh, ng kalendaryo, nandun po yung number ng church or visit our Facebook page nandun po yung information ng church and then, uh, pwede rin po kayo mag-chat as dito po sa my church po natin or uh, isa sa po sa mga staff po natin dito sa church so at least, 
para ma-mention po kayo sa prayer. Uh, Pinag-pray po namin kayo every day na ma-mention po natin yung mga names po ninyo na every time nagbibigay po kayo ng mga prayer request po sa amin. And also, uh, our country, so please pray for this pandemic. So pag-pray po natin na matapos na po, uh, bumalik po sa normal. And also, syempre, yung mga naapektuhan po ng, ng pandemic na ito, especially those members who are are still in recovery. So pag-pray po natin, especially yung kay uh, Brother Parangues, tama po na, kay Brother Parangues, yung family po nila, kay Brother Joey, na ngayon po ay kapiling na po ng ating Panginoon. So, pag-pray po natin yung patuloy na comfort sa family po ni Brother Joey and also uh, full recovery po sa family po niya. I think yung wife niya rin po ay, ay nagkaroon din po. So, pag-pray po natin, especially mga members din po na na-expose sa labas, na ingatan sila ng Panginoon, and then syempre yung mga nag-work na hindi po maiwasan na lumalabas po talaga, pumunta sa market, sa grocery, sa mall. So, pag-pray po natin yung safety po ng bawat isa. And also, Uh, after that, yung Bible studies for young ladies, young men, and then uh, for adult natin. And also, yung ating Asia Baptist Bible College. So, please continue to pray. Nagsimula na po yung first week ng Asia Baptist Bible College. We're still, um, we're still praying for uh, additional students ng, sa church po, nung gagaling po sa church po natin. So, still, hindi pa rin po tayo nasisiro when it comes po sa mga members po natin na nag enroll dito po sa may uh, Asia Baptist Bible College. So, uh, if you want to enroll in Asia Baptist Bible College, so please communicate kay Ma'am Grace, Mother Irvin, or kay Sir Dennis para po sa iba pa mga, uh, sa iba pa mga information po para po sa ating, mga, sa ating pong college. So, yun po. So, uh, pag-pray po natin about is especially si family po ni Brother Joey na they need also an urgent prayer, prayer request po. So, okay, Brother Irvin. Let's all stand as we sing the welcome song. Again, welcome to everyone who has joined us. Uh, mapamembro man po kayo, a special guest, kamag-anak na ating mga members or friends, you are welcome to our worship service. And let us sing the welcome song. There's a welcome here, a welcome here. There's a Christian welcome here, hallelujah. There's a welcome here, a welcome here. There's a Christian welcome Here, let's sing, I am crucified with Christ. I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the fate of the Son of God, who loved me. And gave himself for me. Now we proceed to an important part of our service, and that is our service and worshiping through our giving. Let us pray. Our dear Lord, Heavenly Father, we come to you this time, Lord, to offer our offerings. Uh, we thank you, Lord, for the blessings that we have received from you. We thank you, Lord, for providing our needs. And despite the things that we have been experiencing, Uh, the hardships that we have been experiencing. We thank you, Lord, for being there for us and guiding us all throughout the way. And as we worship you to our, through our giving, may we request, Lord, that you bless our gifts to support the church and also the missionaries whom we are supporting in other important mission work for the furtherance of your gospel. All these things I pray in the name of our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Now we're going to listen to a special number.
Good evening to all, and welcome to our uh, after evening service. Death is a frightening reality that we have to face. When it strikes, it leaves a trail of loneliness, grief, and despair. This is the legacy that Adam, Adam's sin brought upon us. Had this been the end of the story, humanity is locked up in an inescapable tragedy. Living would be futile and dying would be a very dreadful expectation. But because Jesus came in the flesh, died as an atoning sacrifice, and rose again from the dead, then death has lost its, lost its power and its sting to those who have believed in Jesus Christ. 
Death now is but a shadow that believers will face and also, also will serve as an escort to conduct them to the presence of God. There is a glorious future to those who have been united with Jesus Christ. As we continue with our series, we will dwell on the main idea that we had since the previous time we tackled with this, and it is this, that we can only escape the consequences of our relationship to Adam through our relationship with Jesus Christ. Shall we all stand up as we turn our Bibles to the book of Romans, chapter 5. We are going to read from verse 12 to get the main idea up to verse 20, 21. Wherefore, as by one man sin entered into the world, and death by sin, so death passed upon all men, for that all have sinned. For until the law, sin was in the world, but sin was not imputed when there is no law. Nevertheless, death reigned from Adam to Moses, even over them that have not sinned after the similitude of Adam's transgression, who is the figure of him that was to come. But not as the offense, so also is the free gift. For if through the offense of one many be dead, through the mo how much more the grace of God and the gift of grace, which is by one man, Jesus Christ, abounded unto many. Not as it was by one that sinned, so is the gift. For the judgment was by one to condemnation, but the free gift, free gift is of many offenses unto justification. If by one man's offense death reigned by one, much more they which receive the abundance of grace and the gift of grace of righteousness shall reign in life by one Jesus Christ. Therefore, as the offense of one, judgment came unto, upon all men to condemnation. But even so, by the righteousness of one, the free gift came upon all men unto justification and life. For as by one man's disobedience, many were made sinners. So by the obedience of one, many shall be made righteous. Moreover, the law entered that offense might abound. But where sin abounded, grace did much more abound. That as the sin hath reigned unto, unto death, even so might grace reign through righteousness unto eternal life by Jesus Christ our Lord. Shall we pray? Heavenly Father, we thank you once again for the word that we have read. Lord, this is your word. It is inerrant, it is infallible, and it is alive. May it speak to us, O Lord, tonight to give us comfort, to give us strength as we compare the things that Adam brought and the glorious thing that Jesus Christ has brought. And may, O oh Lord, those who listen may realize their own sinfulness, that they would escape their relationship with Adam by trusting you as, as their Lord and Savior. And in Jesus' name we pray, amen. You may now please take your seat. And for those who are listening, welcome to our evening service. Now, Paul, after explaining how we can be justified from chapter 3, verse 21 of Romans, and up to the end of chapter 4, Paul later on enumerated in Romans chapter 5 the benefits of justification. When we are talking about justification, it is the act of God in grace by which he declares the believing sinner righteous in his sight. So all of this benefits in, ju in our justification is mentioned in this chapter from verses 1 to 11. The first in chapter 5 verse 1, we have peace with God. Therefore, having been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. The action of justification happened in the past. It can never be changed. In France, they call it, they call it fait accompli. It is an escape, inescapable truth that we must assume that this is true. Having been justified by faith, we now have peace with God, a present possession through, um, through faith, which is in Christ Jesus. So we have peace with God, and it is true 
Jesus Christ alone, by faith alone in His finished work. And what else? In chapter, in verse 2, we read that by whom also we have access. We have now an introduction, <coughs> excuse me, to stand in this grace uh, before God. We have now an introduction or access to this grace and therefore access to God the Father. What else? We stand in grace. The believer lives in the realm of grace. We will exp deal with that later on as we go on. The believer lives in the realm of grace. We have also the hope of future glory. From, chapter, from verses 2 to 4, there is a glorious future that awaits every believer. And also, we have the guarantee of divine love. God loves us. God loves His children, not on the basis of our merit, but God loves us, in, but, uh, God loves us unconditionally on the basis of His Son. God loves us as children paternally. This is different from His love to the, uh, to the unsaved, which is, the, which is manifested in the common grace. But Jesus Christ loves us more intimately as His children. We have the guarantee of divine love. And what else? We have been delivered from the wrath of God. Now, all of these are, were given. All of these benefits were given in grace. And not through our own efforts. And not through our own merits. There is nothing in us that God saw or foresaw that He would love us. He loved us even before we were born. In our first birth, we have inherited the sinful nature that Adam had, that Adam brought, that dragged us, that dragged the human race into condemnation resulting in spiritual death. That was the thing that we have discussed uh, two Sundays ago. In the, in the section that we will study today, we will continue with the comparison between the Adam in Christ and also with the idea that we need to escape our relationship from Adam by our relationship to, relationship to Christ through the new birth. Let's read... Uh, Chapter 5, verses 15 to 17. Not as the offense, so also is the free gift. For if through the offense of one many be dead, much more by the grace of God and the gift of grace, which is by one man, Jesus Christ, has abounded unto many. Not as it was, not as it was by, that by one man that sinned, so is the gift. For the judgment was by one man to condemnation, but the free gift of many offenses unto justification. For if the, by one man offense death, um, offense death trained by one, much more they which receive abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness shall reign in life by one Jesus Christ. The first thing that I would like to discuss today, uh, the, today is this that Adam brought the reign of death, but Jesus brought, brought in the reign of life. We shall reign in life. To some extent, the effects of Adam's sin and the atoning work of Jesus Christ are similar. Adam's single disobedience introduced condemnation of death through sin upon all humanity. Whereas Jesus' act of obedience to the Father brought life and righteousness to those who believe. No one who has ever descended from Adam is exempted from the effects of the fall. Death has exercised its reign over all humanity. Our sin against God brought forth death as the inevitable consequence. One aspect of this death is the physical death. Death means separation, and in this aspect, it is the separation of the soul from the body. Recently, we have experienced the loss of our faithful members by COVID-19. The news came to us as a shock. We would never have, uh, have the thought that they would be taken soon from us. The pandemic has reminded us that death may intrude any time. Physical death may come to us. Now, through Adam and Eve, though, 
Though Adam and Eve did, did not experience physical death, immediately after they disobeyed God, the process of dying become, began. Adam lived up to the age of nine, 930 before he died. Methuselah, the oldest man who has ever lived, died at the age of 969. Can you just imagine the birthday cake that he had during his last birthday? How many candles did it had? And probably it would be enough to bake the cake. 969, almost a millennium. But the moment that Adam and Eve sinned against God, they experienced that spiritual death. This means that from that moment, they were separated from God. Death means separation. Because we were dead in our sins, we walk according to the course of this world. Following the prince of the power of the air, fulfilling the desires and, um, of the flesh, and live in opposition or as an enemy of God. Even though we were alive physically, we were dead spiritually and unable and unwilling to respond to the gospel. We are the walking dead. It was only through the quickening work of the Holy Spirit that we were made able to respond to God. So we have the physical death, we have the spiritual death. Physical death, the separation of the soul from the body, and also the spiritual death, the separation of, soul from, of the man from God, and the last aspect is eternal death. If sinners continually reject the gospel, they will be eternally separated from God forever and ever. John told us, But the fearful, the unbelieving, the abominable, the murderers, the whoremongers, the sorcerers, the idolaters, and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. Can you just imagine being thrown forever without end, suffering the flames of hell? That would be the future for those people who do not know the Savior, who did not receive His offer of salvation, who did not repent and believe. This is the result of Adam's sin. Adam brought this reign of death by which men by themselves cannot ex escape. Now let us Lest we make a mistake between Adam and Christ and to see them as of equal standing, Paul stated that the effect of Adam's transgression was exceeded by one man, Jesus Christ. Paul emphasized that what Christ has, what Christ has done as the federal head of the new creation is totally different to what Adam did as the federal head of the human race, of the sinful human race. What Christ accomplished exceeds infinitely, both in magnitude, both in nature and degree to the damage that Adam has done by his sin. Adam brought death, but Christ brought the grace of God and the free gift of grace to many. Paul tells us how this abundant gift of grace reads us by one man, Jesus Christ. Take note of the, of the word one man. This speaks of the humanity of Jesus Christ through the through incarnation of the only begotten Son of God, who is God Himself. It was made possible that we will be recipients of this grace. The author of Hebrews writes in Hebrews chapter chapter 2, Hebrews chapter 2, verse 15 and 17. And delivered them who through fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bondage. For verily he took not on him the nature of angels, but took on him the seed of Abraham. Wherefore, in all things it behoved, or it was necessary for him, to be made like unto his brethren, that he might be a merciful and faithful high priest in things pertaining to God, to make a reconciliation for the sins of his people." So it was necessary for Jesus Christ to be made exactly like us, except, of course, the sinful nature. He experienced the frailties of, the human, of humanity. He hungered. He felt tired. He also experienced its limitation. And this was 
this was necessary for him to be a, our faithful and merciful high priest. By living a perfect life as a man, and by paying the debt of sin that we owe against God, the sentence and the reign of death ended on those who believe. Death no longer have the final say in the lives of the believer because Christ died and rose again from uh, rose again. <clears throat> excuse me. We are now possessors of eternal life. Should death overtake us, we will be ushered into the to heaven in the presence of our Lord. There is a word of comfort to the families of the Parangue, the Chabes. Domingo and Angulo and others who have experienced the loss of loved ones. This is God's comfort to you. That your loved one who has trusted the Lord as his Savior is now in the presence of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the coming of Jesus Christ, every believer who died will be resurrected to die no more. And every believer who are still alive at the coming of our Lord, will be transformed into a new, deathless, and glorified body like our Savior's. One day, death, the last enemy, will be destroyed forever. Even more so, through this abundant gift of grace, this result, uh, resulted in our justification bringing about the reign of life in the believers. We are now living in the sphere of life instead of the realm of spiritual death. We are now possessors of eternal life. Now remember this, that eternal life that not, does not start the moment that we die. It starts right now. It starts the moment you have received the Lord Jesus Christ. The implanting of this life through the quickening of the Holy Spirit that enabled us to respond in faith and repentance, we have now uh, eternal life. We are now new creatures in Jesus Christ. All things have passed away, and now all things have become new. Sin and death have ended its reign of terror over us. This is the reason why when we sin, we have now the conviction of the Holy Spirit. This is the evidence of our new life. God is changing our heart, our will, our dispositions, desire, and inclination and made it conform to the character of Christ. Through this, there are changes. Through, though there are, these changes are manifested differently among believers, but such changes are present in them. There is now the increasing desire to pursue holiness and righteousness over time. We are not only content of being declared righteous in the sight of God, but we continually seek that such righteousness should have a practical expression in our daily life. So, uh, in Adam, Adam brought in the reign of death, Jesus brought the reign of life. And the next thing that in Adam, we were made sinners, but Jesus Christ made men righteous. Therefore, as by the offense of one, judgment came upon all men to condemnation. <clears throat> May I have a glass of water? Even so, by the righteousness of one, free gift come upon all men unto justification and life. For as by one man's disobedience, many were made sinners, so by the righteousness of one, many be made righteous. As Paul is drawing a sharp contrast between Adam and Christ, he further explained the grave consequences of Adam's fall. It made men sinners before God. By being bound to Adam's family, they become inheritors of the human, sinful human nature as well as the condemnation of death. But, but by sharp contrast, the righteousness came as a free gift to those who have believed in Jesus Christ. Again, as a review, there are three imputations that are in view in this chapter. The first imputation is the imputation of Adam's sin upon all humanity. This is because Adam, as the federal head of, this is because Adam is the federal head of the human race. You might say that it is unfair that Adam's sins would be imputed on us. You might say, if I were me, I would not sin. I remember the boast of, if you have watched the musical, 
uh, Camelot. Uh, thank you. If you have watched the, if you have watched the musical Camelot, you would see her Sir Lancelot singing in Simwa, and the song Simwa. He said, he said, if I have been made the the partner of Eve, we we should have still be in the garden. So he is so boastful of his of his. Uh, of his self-righteousness, as the musical declares. But we know later on that Lancelot fell with Guinevere into, uh, into adultery. So it is showing us that uh, by our own efforts, we are unable to save ourselves. So uh, if, it was, if you were there in the garden, you would also fall, whether as Eve or as Adam. Now, the second imputation is the imputation of our sin on Jesus Christ. On the cross, Christ bore the penalty as our substitute. The doctrine of substitutionary atonement or penal sub substitution is all throughout the scripture. Paul earlier said in the book of Romans, being justified freely by his grace through the redemption, this is in uh, Romans chapter 3, verse 24 and 25. Being justified freely by His grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom God set forth to be the propitiation or atoning sacrifice through faith in His blood, to declare His righteousness for the remission of sins uh, that are past through the forbearance of God. In, this, in his epistle to the Corinthians, he had also said, in in first corinthians chapter 5 verse 21 first corinthians uh, second corinthians chapter 5 verse 21 for he hath made him to be sin for us who knew no sin that we might be made the righteousness of god in him so at the cross the sins of all those who believe were laid on jesus christ and he suffered for them and so also, Peter also said this in 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 24, Who his own self bear our sins on his own body upon the tree, that we, being dead to sin, should live unto righteousness, by whose stripes ye were healed. The imputation of Adam's sin upon all humanity, second, the imputation of our sins on Jesus Christ, and the third is the imputation of Christ's righteousness on those who believe. How could God be justified be, or be just in justifying sinners? Paul said in Romans chapter 3, verse 24 and 25, again we will read this, whom God set forth, whom God has publicly displayed to be a propitiation or an atoning sacrifice through faith in his blood to declare his righteousness for the remission of sins that are past through the forbearance of God to declare I say at this time his righteousness that he might be just and justifier of them that believe in Jesus when God publicly displayed Jesus Christ as an atoning sacrifice he was pleased the death the sin that was paid for and God the Father is free to declare the believing sinner righteous without compromising his righteousness and his holiness. Since Christ bore our sins, our, our iniquities were forever cancelled. We, we have received greater blessing and much more, more than just forgiveness. Now what is the difference between forgiveness and justification? In forgiveness, God cancelled our sin, erased our sin. Now, that is not the end of the story because God did not cancel our sin just so that we would become moral, morally neutral. We were not just uh, as blank slate morally before God. Christ's perfect righteousness that he live as a man is also counted on the believer and the resurrection of Jesus Christ is the guarantee that we are declared righteous before God. 
Now, this righteousness that is now on us, remember, this is not our own. Martin Luther called this alien righteousness. Righteousness not our own. So, righteousness extra knows or outside of us. It was transferred to our account. So, ibig sabihin ng imputation, that idea of transfer. So, ours, Adam transferred his guilt upon us and also God transferred our guilt on Jesus Christ and, also, and lastly, the righteousness of God is transferred on us. To summarize, on the cross, God the Father treated Jesus Christ as if he lived my life and turns to me as if I live his life. That is the great exchange. Our affinity with Adam by our first birth made us sinners deserving condemnation. This is why such relationship need to be severed. This severance can only be accomplished by new birth. If the Holy Spirit right now is working on your hearts, convicting you of your sin, and showing that Jesus Christ is the only Savior, why not repent and believe on Him now? And then, third point. <clears throat> in Adam, sin abounded. In Jesus Christ, <clears throat> excuse me. <clears throat> Moreover, the law entered, <clears throat> excuse me, that offense might abound. But where sin abounded, grace did much more abound. That, that as sin reigned unto death, even so might grace reign through righteousness unto eternal life by, our, by Jesus Christ our Lord. <clears throat> as Paul sums, the parallels and contrast between Adam and Christ, he stresses that in Adam, sin abounded. But in Christ, grace did much more abounded. The single sin of Adam opened the floodgates of iniquity, sin, and condemnation upon the human race. In Genesis, we would read the, the, after the fall that Cain murdered his brother Abel. In chapter Five and chapter 6, we would see how sin has progressed so that God said that He is going to destroy the human race, <clears throat> leaving only Noah to repopulate the earth again. But humanity has never learned from the act of God's judgment through the Noah's flood. We would find also again and again, even at the Tower of Babel, that when God told them to uh, to be dispersed throughout all the earth, they built the Tower of Babel lest they be scattered abroad when God definitely told them that they should scatter. And they say that let us build this tower so that we may reach heaven or that they may worship the gods of heaven. And also, even as the Israelites in their history, we would find repeating power pattern of obedience and disobedience. And there was just a brief interlude of obedience and blessing that you would find in their history. So, the law was given to them, to the Israelites. We would read that the law was given. So, the law was given that they would live by. But what, they, what would we learn? But instead of submitting, they have violated it rightly after it was given. Remember that Moses, after he came down to the mountain, he he broke the, the tablets of stone and grinded to powder and made the people drink about that. I, uh, that. So that is really how disobedient we are. The law was not given for salvation. Now what is the purpose of the law? In the passage that above we tell us that it was not meant to say but to show the exceeding sinfulness of sin it was added so that there would be a definitive way in accounting for every transgression sin and offenses paul tell us in galatians chapter 3 19 wherefore then what serveth the law it was added because of transgression till the seed should come to whom the promise was made and it was ordained by angels by the hand of the mediator <clears throat> instead of 
bringing as a, being a means to deliver us from sin, it only revealed our need for deliverance. Paul later on would add that the law, though it was holy, just, and good, produced all kinds of wrongful desires within, within him because of his human nature. He would say in he would say later on in Romans chapter 7, verse 7 to 12, What shall we say then? Is the law sin? God forbid. Nay, I had not known sin, but by the law, for I have not known lust, except the law saith, Thou shalt not covet. But sin, taking occasion by the commandment, wrought all in me all manner of concupiscence, for without the law sin was dead. For I was alive without the law once, or I thought I was alive. But when the commandment came, sin revived, and I died. And the commandment which was ordained to life, I found to be death unto me. For sin taken occasion by the commandment deceived me, and by it slew me. Wherefore the commandment is holy, the commandment is holy and just and good. So it only revealed the sinfulness of man. The next purpose of the law is to reveal God's holy character. So the law was not only evil, it was not evil, but it is holy, just, and good, revealing the character of God. But how can we as sinners have hope of salvation if the law has not only presented God's holy character, but also has revealed our sinfulness? As Paul had said, the more that he tried to obey the law or to be exposed to the, the, the law, the more the law arouses within him all forms of disobedience, lasting, and covetousness. The law, instead of curbing sin, has already only increased the awareness of sin and our, also shown our guilt against God. The awareness of our sin must compel us not to trust in our innate ability to save ourselves. Pinapakita lang ng kutusan na wala tayong kakayanan na iligtas ang ating sarili. It is only showing us that we are in need of rescue outside of ourselves. You cannot raise yourself from your own bootstrap. So, subukan nyo nga buhatin nyo ang kanyong sarili. Kahit kaano kayo kalakas, hindi nyo kayong mabuhat ang iyong sarili. Kasi parte pa rin ng iyong katawan ay naka nandiyan pa rin sa lupa. Ganun din ang kaligtasan. Hindi nyo kaya na hindi natin kayang iligtas ang ating sarili. Now, this leads us to the last function of, of the law. Having been shown of our utter helplessness, which is really the point of the law, it leads us to Christ. The Bible says in Galatians chapter 3 verse 24, Wherefore, the law was our schoolmaster or tutor or guardian to bring us to Christ that we might be justified by faith. But after Christ is come, we are no longer, after faith is come, we are no longer under the schoolmaster. The law pointed us away from trusting ourselves into the Lord Jesus Christ, into trusting the Lord Jesus Christ for salvation. Jesus Christ perfectly obeyed the law for us, offered up himself as an atoning sacrifice, rose from the dead, ascended to the right hand of God the Father. This is the greatest demonstration of grace that he lavished on us who had believed. The law revealed the enormity of our guilt, but the finished work of Jesus Christ revealed much more the abundance of grace by faith in him. No longer can anyone say that my sins are too great to be forgiven. The, there is more forgiveness. There is more mercies and more varied grace available to those who would repent and believe. That's why if you have just listened to the song, His mercy is more, it will really show you how great the mercy is and the grace and the love of God, far exceeding our sin. Even now as believers, there is an abundant store of grace available to us for our every need. The author of Hebrews tells us and invites us in Hebrews chapter 4, verses 14 to 16. <clears throat> 
This is what the Word of God say. Seeing that we have a great high priest that is passed into the heavens, Jesus Christ, the Son of God, let us hold fast to our profession. For we have not an high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmity, infirmities, but in all points tempted like as we are, yet without sin. Let us, therefore, let us therefore come boldly into the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Now, in our needs, remember that there is plenty of grace that is available far exceeding our sins. Far exceeding. Uh, in Adam, sin abounded. And law even much showed how abundant our sins and guilt are. But in Christ, much more grace abounded. abounded. You see, believers now live in the realm of grace. Nabubuhay tayo sa kaharian ng biyaya. Nagsimula tayo sa biyaya, sa ating walk sa Panginoon, at lahat yan sa ating buong Christian life. Nabubuhay tayo sa biyaya, binanggit na, na yan kanina ni Pastor Jay sa kanyang sermon. Even before our salvation, God did not kill us, show, uh, allowed us to live. This is what you would call common grace. The grace that He had shown both to the uh, unsaved and saved. But at the moment of our salvation, we have, re- we have received this saving grace. For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the grace of God, not, not of works, lest any man should boast. We have also grace for ev- every sin. In our passage, this is what we would re- read. That moreover the law entered, that offense might abound, but where sin abounded, grace did much more abound. Grace for our forgiveness. God also gave, gave us grace for serving. First Corinthians chapter 15 verses 9 and 10 tell us that uh, tell us about the grace, the capacity to serve that God gives to Apostle Paul and also to us who serve. God also gave us the strength to go on. My sons. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 1. Be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus, or be strengthened in the grace. We are only strengthened by our by grace. God also gave us the grace to endure suffering. The passage that Brother uh, Jay mentioned a while ago. And he said unto me, My grace is sufficient for thee. My strength is made perfect in weakness. Most God rather... Most God, that I would rather glory in my infirmities, that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Therefore, I take pleasure in reproaches, in necessities, and persecution, and all of those things, so that when I am weak, I am strong. Your weakness is not a hindrance, because your weakness, whatever that may be, is the platform by which God's power through His grace will be manifested to us. God also provides us grace to, sancti- to sanctification. Titus chapter 2, verse 11 and 12. For the grace of God that bringeth salvation has appeared unto all men, teaching us that denying all ungodliness and worldliness that we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world. Looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. Believers, we re- live in the realm of grace. God gave us this grace for us to live holy life. Grace does not give us a license to sin. Grace empowers us for, to live a holy lives. Those who say that they have the trusted in Jesus Christ for gra- grace, yet continue to live a, a sinful life, that is only showing that they have not been touched by grace at all. And also grace to sacrifice. Second Corinthians 8 and 9. To, to be able to give. The believer lives in the realm of grace. Nabubuhay tayo sa karian ng biyaya. And that's why we have to remember that Adam, in Adam sin abounded, but in Christ grace abounded. So we should be driven by grace as believers. So how, should, how then should we respond? 
as, believe, as believers, first, we must realize the importance of being born again into the, to enter into the kingdom of God. So Paul has set the contrast between Adam and Christ to show us the necessity, the necessity of being born again. The Bible says, uh, ye must be born again, except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, ye cannot enter into the kingdom of God. You must be born again. You must have a certificate of divorce from Adam's family into the family of Jesus Christ. And this can only be done by faith and repentance on the finished work of Jesus Christ. Next, because Jesus Christ ended the reign of death, let us not live in fear, but in faith and confidence. Jesus Christ ended the reign of death by giving, by living the, by suffering death on the cross that we should suffer. I remember the story of the pastor, uh, of a pastor who was, uh, who had just experienced death in the family and he had little children who was, uh, who had, uh, who had just, who did not understand. They were so little that they do not understand that they will never see their mommy again. So as he was trying to explain to them uh, what is uh, the implication of death, Suddenly, a big truck passed by. And uh, uh, the, the pastor said to them, what, what do you think would happen if you would be run over by a shadow of a truck? And the children said, no, nothing would happen, it's but a shadow. And then he began explaining to them that death that had touched your mommy is but a shadow because Jesus Christ was the one who was hit by a truck and all those who believe in him will only be touched by a shadow. Now, he was making an allusion, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. The rod and the staff, they comfort me. For those who have lost their loved ones, to the family of the Paranke, this is my message to you. To the family of the Chavez, Ang Angolo, and, and the Dominguez family, by the testimony of these people who died, they, it was, uh, they made it uh, clear that they have trusted the Lord Jesus Christ as their Savior. Though they were taken away from us, they are now in His presence. And if you are having the fear of death and you have believed in Jesus Christ, remember this, that Jesus Christ had had been hit by the truck of death so that we will only have the shadow. We will only experience the shadow when it comes to us. And what else? Because the law demonstrates our exceeding sinfulness, we must never look to ourselves for salvation. Remember this, that even as you grow as a Christian, the more that you grow in the Lord, the more that you would see the gravity of your sin that you have never seen before. And sometimes it leads you to despair. Now, how could God even forgive me? How, God, how could God even how, uh, accept me? And sometimes you would think to yourself, am I really saved? Could God really save me with this sin still present in me? Now, that would be dealt with in chapter 7 of the book of Romans. But it would tell us also that God has freed us from the fear of death. That so that we would, uh, this kind of things that we happen should make us look at the Savior who has saved us from our sin. There is more grace and mercy and forgiveness in Jesus Christ than this sin in us. Tandaan natin yan. So that we would stop looking at ourselves. Any time that we have been uh, overcome by guilt and we think we are that we cannot even please God we, that God could not use us remember this that we have only to look at the Savior who saved us because his mercy is more much more and the uh, five much more in this passage is to show the 
the abundance of grace and the forgiveness that, that, that Jesus Christ has accomplished on our, on, our, on our behalf. And also, whenever this sin seems to paralyze us from serving God, because it, it brings us guilt, it could be Satan's accusation so that we would not so that we would be paralyzed from serving him. Stop looking at yourself. Start looking at the one who saved you. And lastly, we must appropriate the abundant grace, not only for our sin problem, but for every need. Because the, the grace of Jesus Christ is abundant, just like I mentioned a while ago. Let us appropriate grace by coming to the throne of grace whenever we need him. Shall we pray? Heavenly Father, we come to you and we thank you, O God, for the, for the words that you have given us. That what you have accomplished exceeds far greater and in infinite magnitude over what Adam has done. Help us, O Lord, to be able to uh, understand and appropriate all of these truths for ourselves so that our walk in you would be stable only having confidence on what you have done or not on what we can do on what we have done and what we have already done. And help us, O oh Lord, to always cherish the finished work of the Lord Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Shall we all sign up? And for you that are listening online, I would like you to invite, I would like to invite you into a relationship with Jesus Christ. If you have not yet trusted Jesus Christ as your Savior, and if the Holy Spirit is convicting you, of your sin and showing you that Jesus Christ is the only Savior, why not respond in repentance and faith? Come to Him. Receive Him into your heart as Savior. Because He's the only one who could deliver. You have to make a choice of receiving so that you would leave the family of Adam into the family of God through Jesus Christ. And remember that to trust only in what Jesus Christ has done on the cross. You cannot trust in yourself. And lastly, if you are a believer and guilt overwhelms you and weakness overwhelms you and the feeling of inadequacy overwhelms you, there is abundant grace in Jesus Christ. It's abundant. He is more than adequate. His grace is more than sufficient for your every need. Come to the throne of grace and ask Him for the grace that you need. And if you have, you have come to the realization that you need to receive Jesus Christ, why not communicate with us? And if you have done that, why not communicate with us, telling you, telling us of the salvation that you have received in Jesus Christ? It's the one. Shall we pray as we close? Heavenly Father, we thank you, God, for sending your son to be a propitiation for our sin, for him justifying us, so that before you we no longer stand condemned, but justified sinners. You not only took away our sin, but you have placed Christ's righteousness over us. And help us, O oh Lord, that as this uh, truth reaches us, that we would not only content to be justified before your sight, that we would live holy lives. And this was, O oh God, and pray in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, we ask you, God, to dismiss us now with your blessings. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You're dismissed.